Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and today I'm going to tell you what not to do when you do DoorDash. Say that very quickly 10 times. What not to do when you do DoorDash. What not to do when you do DoorDash. It's not that hard actually. Yesterday I made a bunch of mistakes in one day and I kind of want to share that to prevent anyone else doing those mistakes. <laughs> Okay, remember. Don't venture out too far to go to a usually busy area. It depends how long you venture out. I ventured out 22 minutes and about like 22 miles or so. So stupid. I thought it was good, but no. I'm gonna venture out to a town that I have never been to. Bellevue, the headquarters of Microsoft. Tech yuppie. Hopefully a lot of tips. Maybe I'll get to DoorDash for Bill Gates. Ah, of course. You bet. Totes my goats. Let's go. I'm already a little late, of course. Go. I'm feeling glad I got sunshine in a bag. Was a big ass fail. 40 miles in commute 40 minutes additionally to all the driving and stuff so pff. that was definitely not worth it you always have to account for the minutes that you lose or hours or whatever nothing is guaranteed usually i think it's only worth it if it's like really buzzing hard it was like all day yesterday dark red now it's you know light red Also, the orders were terrible. <laughs> I would be careful venturing out too much just for some big bucks. I was planning to be there for eight hours. We're gonna spend the whole day <laughs> there. I'm back home already. I did not like it. It just didn't work. I chickened out after about three hours or so or two and a half. Also because I knew that if I waited just a little bit longer, traffic was going to be hell going back home. It really depends on your area, right? I would always advise you to kind of like start from home if that's possible. Start from home if that's possible. Don't go to new areas all the time. Stick with your hood. You don't have this great spatial awareness that you have when you are in an area that you know. This will get better the longer I do this because the restaurants are gonna be the same mostly because you're gonna save time if you know what's up, if you know your restaurant and how things work and stuff. That's another pro. If you see the root on the phone, if you don't know where you are, then you don't know like, oh, that's gonna take me in a good zone or not. If you don't really know an area then you don't know where some restaurants are what the parking situation is what kind of constructions are going on or so you have to constantly adjust so yesterday in that new area to me i had to go to several malls i really love me some pickups in a mall in those malls i just had to find the restaurant which is annoying so if you've never been in the mall like the food court you don't know where things are. It, it's like super confusing. I've had to ask so many people. Ugh, I'm sick of it. Sometimes it's hard to find a restaurant even though you're following the instructions on Google. It's it's weird. It takes you to like weird things and then you get out and you're like, there is no entrance. Where do I go? There is just a, a, a different restaurant. And, ah, weird not asking for help you might be shy and don't really want to ask strangers or restaurants when I get really just frustrated I just ask anyone for any kind of help <laughs> it always gets you further before you try to figure out on your own where to go and walk here and there and just ask. Just ask people. It saves you the time. They know what you're doing. They know you're just delivering. They probably want to help you anyway. So, Go somewhere with peak pay. Don't get distracted with apps that don't have a good peak pay. It's an obvious thing, but you know, in case you do multiple apps, 
I don't know if it's Grubhub or Uber and DoorDash. Uber usually doesn't have great peak pace, not in my area. It's maximum like 150 per order. Yeah, I got distracted with Uber Eats, even though I should have done DoorDash. Uber Eats was just constantly dinging. I had hallucinations at some point, <laughs> just like with that sound. It just went on and on in my head and I was always like, oh, is there another one coming? I didn't get as much from DoorDash, unfortunately. Watch out what you accept depending on what's going on in your area. There is a mandatory $2.50 premium pay for all gig workers for Seattle. Any order that starts or ends in Seattle. But there was a $2.50 bonus in Bellevue this lunch for DoorDash, but not for Uber Eats and since I accidentally took on this one order <sighs> I accidentally just accepted an order that I didn't want to come on man it's like 10 miles and 40 minutes for $16 it brings me far away again yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, there goes my bonus pay and my precious time with that bonus pay. One thing that's also really important, no matter where you are, don't take orders that take you too far out of your zone. For one reason, with DoorDash, you have to schedule yourself in this one zone. And if you're out of that one, you don't get DoorDash orders. But also orders that get you too far out of like a busy zone. And you still might get some orders, but just not as many don't accept any obvious no tip orders here the no tip ones are like four dollars or four dollar fifty or something like that then you know there's like no tip or like a 50 cent tip or something like that and it's like eh it's like barely any money so obviously don't take super low orders but that's that's kind of a that's a given one don't forget to check the mileage before you accept any add-on orders or any stacked orders sometimes you just see like oh it's on your route but then it like kind of underneath that is like plus so and so many miles be careful before you accept anything with a uh, doordash you can kind of zoom out and kind of see where it is usually if you're not driving at the same time uber eats just <laughs> this app seriously this whole place is going downhill it sucks um you cannot really zoom out on anything to kind of like see where you are not to force longer dashes when it's not really going well it depends really if you if you're like a full day dasher if you have like long shifts and just do it throughout the whole day and also of course it depends how much money you need or you expect from this gig you know some days it's just not really flowing you don't really get good orders or for some reason it's supposed to be busy but i don't know what's up sometimes there's just those weird days where things are just not going great and then you just okay i guess i'm gonna drive to this hot spot and then and it's just frustrating if it doesn't work out <laughs> call it a day and be like next time next time will be better it's kind of contradictory sometimes when it's going really well like if you got some nice orders within a short time and you have like a good hourly rate at that moment if you're close to home and if the night is slowly starting to dwindle down sometimes you have to stop when uh, when you're at the top i'm so confused it's just a better feeling when everything was like super great unless the orders just keep flowing and flowing after another continuum <laughs> because that's great that doesn't always happen at least here or where i am yeah sometimes it's better for just like the hourly rate just like cut it off and be like okay that was good i'm going home don't avoid the weekends could also be holidays or inclement weather it was like raining a little bit last sunday and for some reason there was a five dollar peak pay in seattle on top of the two dollar fifty seattle pay it was crazy i made 127 dollars in three hours that was the best hourly rate i've ever earned in any job be aware of what's happening and see the weekends those were my tips i still think it's a lot of luck with DoorDash and Uber Eats, you know, sometimes it's just like shitty orders. It's not all shit. There can be good things 
Usually people are nice, usually people tip. Sometimes you get like amazing stacked orders. I got one order, I was already on my way. Then I got another stacked order for the same restaurant. Turns out also for the same person. And it was the same food. <laughs> I don't know if it was a mistake, but the restaurant owner was like, oh, well, they paid us, so we make it, so all good. And I was like, cool. So for like one drive up maybe four miles or so, I got $20 or 24 That was pretty good. Yeah, thank you, Karen. It was a Karen. <laughs> I delivered food to a prostitute. I was on my way. I was right in that restaurant and then another order came in. So that was very convenient. It was like a one minute drive down the road to the Knights Inn. And I knocked and like she opened the door and... I'm out of here. Yeah, let me know if uh, that was helpful. Please subscribe <laughs> if you like. I don't know how many DoorDash videos I'm gonna make because I don't really have a good uh, way to film myself doing DoorDash because I don't really have a secondary camera. But you know, if something crazy happens, I'll let you know. Thanks for watching and bye. And something crazy did happen. I got re-ended pretty bad, my first car accident ever, but because of insurance stuff I can't really go into detail yet, and I also don't really know if I'll get back to delivering as of right now. At least I got a free breakfast burrito, I guess.